What's up, Twins fans? It's Tom. Thanks for clicking on this video. We're talking about new Minnesota Twin. Yes, they finally signed someone to a major league contract, Josh Stamount. Um, but there's a couple of things that I find really curious about how the twin side of things is reporting things so far and how Royals fans reacted to him being non-tendered. Uh, so that's actually I want to start there. Um, some of the things I read around sort of the Royals blogosphere, I guess, um, one place suggested that he's unlikely to pitch in 2024. That was their reaction to him being non-tendered, um, that they didn't even expect him to be pitching this upcoming season. Um, and then another one was quick to point out that there is no timetable for his return. So Stamont had surgery uh, to try to repair uh, thoracic outlet syndrome. That's still a very kind of unknown thing. Uh, I don't think we've really hammered that out in the baseball world of, you know, it's mysterious. Uh, so there's not really as concrete of a timetable or a recovery program or things like that as there would to be to like Tommy John. Um, so maybe that's all on the table. Maybe, maybe, you know, he's throwing in spring training. Maybe he's missing all of next year. So um, there are his numbers, though. I wanted to make sure to call that out, that there is a lot of uh, questions about his health. I, I assume we'll, we'll, we'll hear more from the twin side uh, once once the the signing comes official and the Twins uh, can kind of officially talk about it. Uh, but here are his stats, and I think the biggest thing is if you're a Twins fan, um, and that's sort of the primary lens in which you, you consume baseball, you're probably seeing these numbers and thinking, like, what the heck? I thought this guy was one of the best relief arms in the league because he has absolutely killed the Twins over his career. And, you know, there's been some great stuff here, you know, especially the 2021 season. Uh, he was tremendous, uh, but he's 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 got tremendous stuff. He's he's been great in in certain patches, but overall, uh, you know, has not kind of reached the uh, the area where a Twins fan may may have assumed. And you know, I mentioned uh, Kansas City non tendered him, and, and this was with a projected arbitration salary you're seeing here of one point two million. Uh, that was per MLB trade rumors. Their their model. Projected for Stalmont to only cost $1.2 million. And the Royals said, nah, we, we're, we're going to use our 40-man roster spot and, and that $1.2 million a little differently. Um, and maybe I would view this as, oh, a cheap Royals trying to cut corners things. But then they went out and turned around and spent a bunch of money. Um, so that's a huge red flag to me. That they didn't think this guy was going to be worth a very modest salary. Um, and... You know, given some some of the roster flexibility he creates as well, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, you know, so I think you can tell by the way I've talked about this so far. I'm not crazy about this move. It's not without upside. That's a certain. And we'll touch on that a little bit more. But uh, this is not a guy I would have targeted, to be honest. Um, now it's a very low risk, high reward move. Still, uh, the Twins are, you know, they're not even paying him that much. They're paying him less than a million dollars guaranteed, and he's got some incentives. Um, so it's not like they're taking on some huge risk with this guy or counting on him a ton, but you do only have 40 you know, roster spots. So I suppose as soon as the 60 day injured list opens up, if he really is going to miss significant time, they can transfer him to the 60 day injured list. Again, we'll see on that, but my big red flag with him, and it's very easy to see in anything you look at is he walks way too many guys, uh, walks way too many guys. This list is the highest walk percentages of any pitcher with at least 150 innings since the start of the 2019 season. And Josh Stalmont has the 11th worst walk rate at 13%. That is out of a sample uh, of 416 pitchers. That's the bottom 3% he's in there in terms of walk percentage. Uh, so that's, that's a huge, that's a huge problem. And, you know, this is tough to say given given what we're looking at here, but this is a thing that I don't have a lot of confidence that can be improved. And I say that's difficult to say because if you look at the guy right behind him, Tanner Scott, he actually was one of the better relief pitchers in baseball last year because he cut his walk rate in half. Uh, I don't know how he did that year over year. Uh, incredible, incredible turnaround for him. But I think that's the upside with Josh Stamont is if you can get him healthy and fix something, he could be one of the best middle reliever. He has that kind of stuff. I'm just not confident that it, it can get to that point. Uh, again, you, you have a, a, a certain number of roster spots. I would have liked to uh, probably target someone else, but the arm talent for Josh Stamont is 
unquestionable. This guy throws triple digit heat. He's got a great breaking ball as well. And then the last thing, you know, do want to call out to that um, being a guy who is arbitration eligible. Uh, we don't see that usually in free agency. So there's some interesting kind of flexibility things that come with that. He has less than five years of service time. So that means he can be optioned. Anybody with more than five years of service time doesn't matter if they haven't used all their options. They can refuse an option. Stamount cannot. He can be optioned to the minor leagues. Uh, he has an option. You see there, this is all on Fangraphs. So if you're wondering, if you, if you want an easy place to look this stuff up, Fangraphs is tremendous for this. Um, and you see there, he's also going to be arbitration eligible next season. So he's not a free agent until 2026. So uh, there is a lot of upside with this signing if he can get right, if he can get healthy, if he can tame those walks. Even if it's not to the extent that Tanner Scott did, um, it still could be pretty impressive uh, for for this guy to turn around. It could be a very nice piece. And again, a, a multi-year piece who has an option. So if he does struggle uh, for a bit coming back from injury, you could send him down to the minors next season. Uh, so there's a lot of good stuff going on here. So he, I, I know I've thrown a lot of cold water on this signing, but I do want to acknowledge that there are definitely multiple pathways for this to become a tremendous success for the Twins. Um, I'm just not sure if this is the kind of thing that I'd like to see them doing in the spot that they're in, if you know what I'm saying. You know, you're the defending AL Central champions. This seems a little bit cute to me, I guess is the way I would put it. Now, we know the payroll situation uh, as far as we know so far. We'll see. It may change once they get some clarity with the TV stuff, but they're expecting to cut payroll uh, potentially by quite a bit. So, you know, that that's certainly something to keep in mind is maybe the money this was this maybe this was as much money as they had and they were trying to uh, create the biggest avenue to upside. And if that was the case then, you know, this becomes a lot more understandable and it's entirely possible that was the case. So, we'll see. We'll see. Um but I did want to call out, you know, there there was a lot of pessimism from the from the Royals and I don't know if that was just coping <laughs> you know, and trying to make sense of it. But I think it's a huge red flag that the Royals didn't want to just pay this guy $1.2 million, um, you know, and keep him around. Huge red flag to me. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully, you know, um, we have some good news on his health and, and, and things turn around, but I'm not, I'm not going to be super optimistic about that. <laughs> Thanks for checking this out. I really appreciate it. We'll talk again soon.